copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Portland Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Broadcast 284 regarding the holdup. Be on the lookout for two bandits. One described as tall with receding chin. Number two is short, dark complexion, heavy build. These men are armed and dangerous. And that's all. Rose and blue. how many thousand miles your automobile has gone, but how many thousand more is it good for? And although I don't pretend to be able to predict the future of man, I can read the fortune of your car if I know the kind of treatment you've been giving. I do say without fear of contradiction that if your car still is being pushed around on last winter's motor oil, still is wearing red flannel lubricants in the transmission and differential it will eventually wind up on the operating table of some doctor of automotive surgery. Now is the time to put your car in perfect condition. Prepare it for the rigors of summer driving that lie ahead. And there's no better way to do that than with an overall Rio Tech lubrication job. Your neighborhood Rio Grande dealer not only has the finest of materials that money can buy, but he knows his business from A to Z and gives each automobile the exact kind of lubrication specified by the man who made it. And so I make this suggestion, friends. Don't wait until something goes wrong. Have your car Rio checked so that nothing will go wrong. And it would be an excellent idea to have it done within the next day or two. Don't forget. For every moving part of your motor, inside and out, Rio check. And for real power and money-saving mileage, police car performance Rio Grande Crack. The gasoline preferred by those who drive the most and know the most about gasoline. The facts of tonight's program have been taken in the main from the confidential files of the Police Department of Portland, Oregon. It is our privilege, therefore, to welcome to Calling All Cars, Chief H.M. Nye of Portland. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to be given this opportunity to speak to you as a guest of Calling All Cars. Law enforcement officers of the West know this program as one that contributes much toward the education of the public and the work the peace officer does in maintaining law and order. We are grateful for the cooperation of all agencies in the task of bringing home to the potential criminal the stupidity of embarking on a life of crime. We especially appreciate the practice of this program in presenting the work of the law enforcement officer rather than the activities of the criminal in our battle to suppress crime. Regardless of his brutality or his fancied cleverness, the lawbreaker will inevitably learn that crime cannot pay. Flashing raindrops cut the cold December night as two men stood with drawn guns facing a trembling victim. And if you make a move, we'll shoot first and take your dough afterwards. Don't shoot me. You can have my money. Thanks, mister. Just keep your hands in the air and my partner will take it. It's all in his wallet. Okay. Now you keep him covered. I got something for him. No, no, don't be... Shut up and keep your hands in the air. (laughs) Well, that's it. Come on, let's see if we can find some more entertainment around this town. I think we ought to wait for some guy to come along this alone. We're not waiting. But there's a dame with this guy. So what? If she squawks, let her have it. You can take care of that. Pipe down. Stick your hands up, both of you. Oh, Jim. Hey, what is this? You'll find out. And don't try to be funny. Don't do what he tells you, Jim. Yeah, that's being smart. Get your hands up, fella. You can't get away with this. We haven't any money anyway. Oh, a fresh guy, huh? All oh, this punk's got it some change. Where's your pocketbook, lady? I don't have it with me. Don't touch her. Take care of her. After I teach you not to be so smart. Stop it. 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 Yeah. I guess that'll take care of you, too, sister. 
I told her to shut up. Come on, let's get going before the whole neighborhood starts to yammer. I'm an old man. I'll gladly give you my money if you'll just let me go without harming me. All right, all right, mister. Hand over the dough and can that cheddar. Here, here it is. All of it. Come on, let your papa go. Wait a minute. I'm not in any hurry. Please, please, I beg of you. Let me go. I'm going right now. You're not going any place without me. How do I know the heel won't start yelling? I give you my word, I won't. Why, why there's not a house for a half a block. Oh, yeah? They could hear me. You have your car, and you can be miles away before I could get to a phone. Well, you got it all figured out, haven't you? Well, it just so happens I don't like your luck, eh? No, no, please, please just don't. make sure you keep quiet. No. Well, are you ready now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. I just like to take care of everything. Doing things by halves don't appeal to a guy like me. On the night of December 25th, Special Officer John T. Corcoran was making his rounds in the Lowellhurst district. Royal Court was still unpaved, and as he made his way along the slippery boardwalk, his attention was attracted by an automobile parked in the muddy street. Down went the Ginty to the bottom of the sea, and he must be pretty wet for which well. I wonder what a car'd be doing here, not a house and half a block. <laughs> if my flashlight will work in this liquid blessing from heaven, I'll have a look. <laughs> Empty is a house with a banshee. Now, why would they be leaving it unlocked in the bargain? An overcoat on the running board, another one in the mud. There's something screwy about this. Hey, you there in the shrubbery. What are you doing? Come on, speak up. I'm an officer. My car's stuck in the mud. Well, what are you doing on this street? Do you live here? Oh, I didn't know it was a dead end street. I turned on my lights, and I saw there was a stop. What made you drive in here without any lights? My battery's low. Go on. Well, I stopped. I got stuck in the mud. That's all. I'm thinking maybe it isn't all, mister. You're walking back to that car with me, and I'm keeping this light on you, so don't be trying any funny with me. You got no right to treat a citizen this way. Maybe not, but get going. Say, what is this, anyway? You're tall, and you got a big Adam's apple instead of a chin. I'll report you to headquarters. Yeah, they'd be happy to see someone answering your description. Now, stand still while I look at this overcoat. Oh, now, what are you doing with revolver shells in this pocket? I use them for target practice. All right, mister. Hey, where's your partner? What do you mean, my partner? I mean the fellow that owns the other coat. Oh, oh that. That's just a spare coat I carry in the car. Well, now, that's fine. Only I'm thinking you carry your spare partner, too. And what's more... I don't think he's so far away, so stand still while I look in your pocket. Go ahead. I hope you find what you're looking for. Hey! Hey, that's what you weren't looking for. Now, let go of my feet. Down you go, Mr. This is a gun in your stomach, Papa. Now, turn me loose or I'll let you have it. You mean it was in my stomach? Now, we'll turn your wrist slow like this. (laughs) And now a quick jerk like this. Department if we want to. You know, this is the first time we've had this pair on the run. 
going to keep running till we get them. That was a fine thing I did when I let go of that monkey's hands to start shooting at his partner. Ah, you did all that, Gordon. Yeah. You can hardly hold on to a man with a gunfight to take care of. David, are you sure the guy you shot was the one you'd handcuffed? And how. I hit him just as he was going into the trees. Back up, Bert speaking. Ray Task, huh? We'll send a squad car out to that address. When they check on it, have them phone in right away. Yeah, tell them to step on it. Have they got a line on the car? Yeah. Probably a hot car, but it was registered under the name of Ray Task at 704 Harvard Street. Yeah, but we still don't have a line on that. Unless the one I had goes to a hospital to have my slug fight out of them. Small chance of that. There's just one angle. I've sent for a boy that got a good look at both of those mugs and worked in the filling station until they stuck him up and sent him to a hospital with a fractured skull. Why hasn't he looked at the gallery pictures before? He just got home from the hospital today. I hate to drag him down here tonight, but it's necessary. And between the two of us, we ought to find the picture of an Adam's apple. Yeah, if he's been mugged for the gallery. Here's the cannon, boy. Oh, fine. Come in and sit down, young fellow. Thank you. You understand why we had to ask you to come here at this hour, don't you? Yes, sir. I'm glad to do anything I can to help. How old are you, Paul? Seventeen. Hey, just a minute, fellas. Just an idea that won't mean anything, but... Hello. Have them look and see if there's any record on Ray Task, 704 Harvard Street. Okay. Now, Paul, do you think that you could pick out the pictures of those men if we have them? I sure could. And I'll never forget them. Officer Coughlin here believes he had the taller of the two bandits tonight, but it was dark, and he could hardly identify him as well as you might. Oh, yes, I could. When a fellow has a gun in my stomach, I'm not forgetting him. All right. Now, according to the report, Paul, you were on duty in the filling station about. What can I do for you, sir? Get back in there and keep that trap huh? shut. Oh, sure. But the boss took most of the money home, right? I tell you to shut up. We'll find out about the dough. No worries. Come on, come on. Well, it's all in here. It's mostly changed. Hurry up, will you? I told you to stay in the car. But another car might come along. Now what? Get back there. I got something to finish here. All right, but hurry. Now you. Get back in that corner. What for? You, you don't have to tie me up. I'm not. I'm just in a hurry, and I don't want to have to chase you all over the place. <laughs> there. Maybe that'll take care of you for a minute. I can see how you'd be very likely to remember them. It was the short one that beat you up. Yes, sir. And the tall one with no chin, and the big Adam's apple drove the car. That's right. Excuse me, you asked for the record on Ray Tass? What? You mean we have one? Yes, sir. He did 60 days a couple of years ago. Stole an automobile. His brother Earl Tass got a suspended sentence. Have you got a picture of the brother? Yes, we've got pictures of both of them. Oh, wait a minute, hold everything. Hackerberry speaking. Oh, hasn't lived at that address for six months, huh? Was his brother Earl living with him? Right, sir. Okay, we'll follow it up in the morning. Now, let's take a look at those pictures. That's the one. That's the one that kicked me in the shins and then slugged me. Now, wait a minute. What do you say, Paul? Well, that's the one that was driving the car. I'm positive of it. You mean to say he was driving a car registered in his own name? From now on, I won't be surprised at anything. It was probably the brother that shot at you, Cochran. Sure it was. Yeah, look at this picture, Paul. There's the guy to beat you up, isn't it? No. No, that's not the one. I think it's good luck. I can try to remember. No. No, I, I wish I could tell you it was, but I never saw this fellow before. Well, that's that. Must be three of them. There's only been two of them on every job they've pulled. Yeah, and that's something. It does me, too. Well, is there anything else I can tell you? No, I'm sorry, Paul. One of the boys will take you home. You get a mighty big help. Thanks a lot, Paul. You'll have the pleasure of identifying these babies in court soon. I sure hope so. Well, good night. Good night. Well, might as well go, too, Corcoran. Phillips and I are going to stay here all night if we have to. Could I ask a favor? Sure, Phillips. When you catch up with that guy that kicked my shins, I'd like to be the one to hold hands with him when we're bringing him in. Throughout the night, all hospitals in the city were watched for the wounded bandits. Anyone answering the description was brought to headquarters and questioned by the detectives morning found them weary and still without any tangible clue. Morning, boys. The chief sent me in your hand. Oh, sit down, Hall. I'll let you sit here and figure angles like we've been doing all night. Yeah. 
We're going out for a cup of coffee. Here's a test predicate card. When we come back, we'll start all over again. And give you the... Hey, wait a minute. What do you got? Look. While the younger brother was in here on that auto theft graph, he was treated at the county hospital for a sword ailment. So what? That's a long chance that maybe he's been going back there for treatment. So they might have his right address? Oh, small chance. Get me the county hospital in a hurry. You couldn't get anything from the last place they lived? No. We've had men go over the whole neighborhood this morning. Hello. This police headquarters. I want to know the last address you have on Earl Task. That's right. Hello, Georgie. Now, I'll hold the line. If we could nab the brother, at least we'd have somebody to work on. You think he's been working with him on the stick ups? Well, he doesn't answer the description, but you can't tell. Hello? Yes. Move from Harvard Street to 381 East Davis Street. Thank you. Well, that's it, boys. Any mug that would be dumb enough to drive a stick-up car registered in his own name wouldn't think of a hospital having his brother's address. And I'll bet his brother's nursing him right now. Gentlemen, may I accompany you to this little party? Yeah, let's go. You can't do that. Keep yet. quiet. If you don't want more trouble than you've got now, better have your gun ready. You know what a rat will do in each corner. Shall I go up there? Yeah, we'll go together after we cover this part of the house. Hey, Tigerberry, Philip, yeah? come here, quick. What's up? I saw somebody moving in the basement. There's a window on the side of the house. Which way were they going? Toward the front of the house. Here's the window. Kick the glass in. I can't see him. He's dark down there. Hey, what's that noise? I see him now. He's going through a window that leads under the porch. That's lattice work on the side of the porch. You can see him from there. I'll go in the basement and cover him from the window we went through. Okay, fellas, but keep behind something. Okay. It's hard to see anything under the porch. Well, he can't get out. All right, Task. Come out of there with your hands up. We've got you, Task. Come out of there. We'll start shooting. There he is, moving up near the front. We don't want to shoot you, Task, but we'll have to if you don't come out. I've got him covered from in here. Do I let him have it? Task. I'm giving you one more chance. That's more than you ever gave anybody. Are you coming out? All right, Phillips, give it to him. Three times loser. Killed a boy. Yeah. What does he look like? 
Short, dark, sort of skin, olive color. It's the one, all right. What's his name, Ray? Tom, maybe. Ned. Ned what? He liked people up after we robbed him. He didn't want him to, but he seemed to get pleasure out of him. What's his last name? Where can we find him? North End. North End of town. Skid Road. Skid Road? <laughs> you mean where all the joints and pop houses are? Yeah. Skid Road. That preaches there. Preaches? Yes. That's Ed. Skid Road. He's a vengeance. You've got to tell us more about him. Come on, give us the truth. <laughs> truth. <laughs> I didn't know there were as many street preachers in the whole country as we've seen tonight. They really go to town in this section. I think this is just a waste of time. Even if the guy was dying, I think he gave us a runaround. Well, I won't be satisfied until we've seen every soul saver on Skid Row. Well, but it doesn't make sense. A guy that beat his victims like this Ned did, if that's his name, it wouldn't be preaching in his spare moment. That's just the point. When a guy's as brutal as he was, you want to look for something screwy in the setup. I think Ray Tash told the truth before he cashed in. Okay. Well, here's another bunch that's getting ready to start their service. How they get a congregation in a rain like this is more than I know. Hey, Phillips, how about you joining the congregation this time? I've about run out of nickels for the drum. All right. But I hope this is the last one. The wages of sin is death. The crimson path is death. Amen, amen. Glory, hallelujah. I'm glad that I've been saved and my footsteps has been turned in the right path. Amen. Now, you all hear the story of a real convert. Listen to him, and you'll all see the light. Praise be the Brothers and sisters, I too have been a sinner. Amen. I have stole lots of things that was not mine. Amen. But I paid for my sins in prison as man has ordained. Amen. And while I was behind them great prison walls, I had time to think, yeah. and I saw the light. Lord, yes, Lord. I saw the light, and now I don't have nothing but kindness yeah. for my fellow man. Yeah. Yes, once I was brutal. Once I believed in an eye for an eye. But now, now I'm as gentle as a lamb. Yeah. And all of you, all of you that's listening to me, do even as I did. Yeah. Confess your faith. Yeah. 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 Now, everybody, everybody come into the mission hall. Follow me, and I'll show you the way to be a thief. Come in and listen to me tell you how's the right way to live. Praise be the end. Right this way. Right this way. Just a minute, young woman. Yeah, what do you want? Your leader is a very impressive speaker. Does he preach every night? Oh, yeah, he's awful good. He's the leader of our group. May I ask his name? Oh, everybody down here knows him. That's Brother Ned. Oh, Brother Ned, eh? Uh, what's his last name? Oh, we don't use no last names. We're all brothers and sisters. Uh, do you want to meet Brother Ned? Yes, I'd like to very much. Oh, uh, uh, Brother Ned... Uh, come here. Yes, Mr. Kane. Uh, this guy wants to meet you. Blessings on you, brother. Are you too tired of the sordid ways of the world? Will you join us in our salvation hall? There's hot coffee and salvation for everyone. Well, uh, are you going to preach in there tonight? Tonight? No, brother, I'm sorry. But tonight I have other things to do. I have other souls to take care of. Well, uh, there are so many that need being taken care of. I'll Lazy come around. Thing. I'll come around some night when you're preaching. I'd like to hear you. Thank talk. you, brother. Thank you. And now I'm a seat of my plot. The donuts must be divided equally. Everybody, come this way. Come and get your coffee, donuts, and salvation. Did you see that guy I was talking to? Didn't I? That was Brother Ned. Well, well, so that's Brother Ned. He answers the description, all right. He'll be leaving in a few minutes. He said he knew some souls that have to be taken care of tonight. Well, if he's the right one, we'll do some saving ourselves. We'll save some people from going to the hospital. Hey, here he comes. Oh, just a minute, Brother Ned. Oh, Brother, uh... Oh, I don't think I know you. 
No, I don't think you do, but you're going to. Because we're all going to take a nice little trip together. Oh, I'm sorry, brothers, but I can't tonight. Oh, yes, you can, brother. We're officers. Uh, police? Yes, brother, police. Come on. Grab him, Bob. Let me go, brother. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go now. Oh, I've got it. Get your bracelets on. Now you've got it. Let me go, I tell you. I have the Lord's work. You let me go. I'm not going to let you go for a long time, brother. Come on, get in there. Now you can't put me in there. I've got to take care of my plot. Never mind. They'll be taken care of. But if you don't get in that cell, you'll be no. taken care of. No, I tell you. Oh, no. God. Yeah. feel at home, and you'll talk. Yeah. After those three stretches you did in California, you ought to feel at ease with bars around you. Now, you got me all wrong, brother. You might as well talk, because there's dozens of souls you took care of that will identify you as the guy that beat them half to death. I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about, brothers. I suppose you don't know what that automatic was doing in your pocket, do you? That? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, I carry that for protection. You see, some of the brethren in the mission are tough customers, as you Do you call deny it. you knew Ray Task? Brother Task? Oh, yes, I knew him, but I haven't seen him for some time. He was one of my first converts. I'll say you converted him right into a grave. Son? Oh. Has Brother Task passed on to his reward? Yes, he has. And it's too bad you can't get the same reward. I, I'm afraid you're talking in riddles, brother. Cut that brother act. Now listen, Ned, the game's up. You've been very clever to swell act. But just before Ray died, he confessed. He told us all about you. He did. That dirty rat always was yellow. What did you say? You heard me, coppers. That dirty rat always was yellow. I knew I should have worked alone. Well, well, that sounds like the guy we've been looking for for a long time. Well said, brother Ned. So you admit you worked with him on the stick up. Sure, sure, sure. I admit it. You never would have got us if that jellyfish had learned what I tried to teach him. Yeah, the brotherly love policy. Slug first, last, and always. Ah, nuts. I'm disgusted. All right, what do you want to know? Well, this is just idle curiosity, but uh, why did you always beat people up? Why? The same reason you guys always play poker. I got a lot of fun out of it, see? Well, that's an original idea. How about the religious angle? Yeah. Was that a lot of fun, too? But that. <laughs> you know, coppers, that's a funny angle. Well, go ahead and tell us. I'd like to get one laugh out of this case. Well, you see, when I did my first stretch in California, I did one of the stir shows. I had the lead in this show, see? The con had to have some entertainment. Does it say the lead in this show? Sure, and was I terrific. Even if I did play the part of the guy that always got it in the end, the cons liked it. But you know, I got seven and eight carton cords. So what? Uh, the guy's really screwed. Go on, Ned. Well, after I get out the third time, I come up here to Oregon. I'm standing on Skid Road. And this guy comes along with a drum and a band and makes a spiel, and it's pretty good. So, that gets me an idea. You mean you got the idea it would be a good front for you? No, nah, no, nah, I never even thought of that. I just figured I could join the flock and get some free handouts and maybe the layouts and some of the members. Then I could visit them when I went home. What got you into big-time stick-ups? Uh, I guess maybe I was dumb. But the guys in the mission didn't have no dough. I should have known that, I guess, but it made me sore. Yeah, I was plenty sore. So you took it out on everybody you stuck up? Sure. Sure I did. But what else could I do, brother? This guy's a screwball if I ever saw one. You're telling me. But I just want to clear up one angle, Ned. How about the kid brother, Ray Test? Did he work with you on any of the stick-ups? Nah, nah, of course not. He didn't have no nerve. Okay, Ned. That's all we wanted to know. Oh, uh... You don't mind if your audience leaves you now, do you? Without any curtain call. Uh, I'm used to the raspberries from you dumb coppers. But you know, everything is going to be all right. I've sinned, it's true. But I've seen the light, brother. I've seen the light. Glory, hallelujah. Save if it. I'm not Save, it. Huh? Save it, Ned. Sorry we can't uh, wait around to hear more about this, but uh, where you're going, you'll have an appreciative audience for a long, long time. Oh. moment, we will present concluding facts regarding our program. I'd like to say this before we close, friends. Whether you're going to the fair, or in search of wildflowers, or merely going about your daily tasks, there are no more congenial motoring companions in pleasure or business 
than wear and tear preventing real lube motor oil and powerful Rio Grande cracks, the most highly recommended gasoline sold in the West. One bandit was dead, and another in custody as a result of the wave of crime. Brother Ned received a sentence of 20 years. He has been most forcibly taught that crime cannot pay. Police calling all cars, attention all cars, a cancellation broadcast 284 regarding a holdup. Suspects in this case captured by Portland officers. That's all, Rose and Clinton. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Next week at this hour, Rio Grande will present Murder at Sunset. This is the...